I want to thank you all back, and uh, I'll start the questioning now. I have three three questions. I'm going to try to get to all three, so if your answers could be pretty pretty short to this. Uh, I think I'll go to Ambassador Yuen uh, first. Uh, Ambassador, you noted in your testimony that representative of the governments from each freely associated state signed a memorandum of understanding earlier this year, so all, all of them signed. Uh, it's our understanding that in doing so, they all accepted a good faith top line offer of $6.5 billion in direct economic assistance, assistance over 20 years. I also understand that the total compact proposal includes funding for the U.S. Postal Service of $634 million, which brings the total package to $7.1 billion over 20 years. That was all agreed to, I understand. And as you noticed in your testimony, as I noticed in your testimony, it is important that we successfully renew the compacts of the Free Association to avoid any lapse in our assistance, the U.S.'s assistance, to all of our these important partners. So I'm asking, uh, the compacts uh, of Free Association with the federal states of Micronesia, Palau, and the Republic of Marshall Islands is important to the United States. It's important to the uh, compact and to the islands and also to us. So it's mutually important. Why is the mandatory funding necessary? Quickly, if you can. Uh, so mandatory funding is necessary so that these island states can plan their future. Uh, we had an experience. Uh, mandatory funding started when? What years did we actually start mandatory funding? We've done funding? it every, every time. The, uh, the first time, 80, 80, 84, so we did it. it started in 1980s. Yeah. And, and we also did it in 2003. Gotcha. The only one we didn't do it was for Palau uh, in, in, uh, for their last agreement. And we didn't do it. As a result, their agreement took eight years to be uh, passed by the Congress. And as a result, they could not plan yearly budget and so on. This is why they- So it they gives you sustainability. It's yes, important sir. for them to have sustainability to be able to plan their life out for the next 20 years and be able to take care of their, their, their yes, citizens. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. My second question is going to be also uh, to you and to Ambassador Cantor. Uh, the proposal requests the funding for the compacts be appropriated to a new compact assistant fund administered by the Secretary of State rather than the Secretary of Interior, even though jurisdiction and, and responsibility will still will remain with the Interior Department. Uh, since 86, Congress appropriated funds for compacts to the Secretary of Interior as the Secretary is the most appropriate uh, uh, official to fulfill his responsibility. So why did the administration propose the change? Secretary, uh, Honorable Cantor, uh, Secretary Cantor, we'll start with you. And then we'll go back to, to Mr. Thank Arthur. you, sir. Um, I understand that OMB, the administration, chose state due to the current focus on the region, on, the region, on China. Uh, as you know, the world has changed over the last 20 years. Uh, my understanding is that there is going to be a new account at the State Department, but at the same time, they're going to leverage uh, our expertise you know, at DOI since we've been implementing this since the 1950s. Is it just right. another layer? Is it, can it cause us more? Uh, bureaucratic uh, t uncertainty? It, it could. It's something that, you know, we ask, you know, why OMB, you know, chose this. So but you, it's basically so most you weren't, you didn't, you didn't offer it up and say, let them help us. My understanding is that we didn't, we didn't offer Okay, we'll find, we'll figure this one out. Okay, we're going to figure that one out. Mm -hmm. Now, my final question uh, goes uh, to, uh, to Ambassador Yuen and Special Envoy, really all three of you. We understand that negotiation with the Marshall Islands have yet to conclude. This is concerning because Congress faces a dawning deadline to complete our work in the compacts uh, before the end of this fiscal year. What is the plan for the compact negotiations with the Republic of Marshall Islands to get this finished? And if, you, if we'll start with Dr. Mohandas and we'll go right up the chain. Um, thank you, sir. So we, we are not directly involved in the, the negotiations, so I'll defer to uh, Ambassador Yoon on that. But what I will say is from the department's perspective, we are strongly in favor of a uh, quick resolution of the issue. Ms. Cantor. Um, sir, uh, we are hopeful that we will resume negotiations with the RMI, but if the amendments to the compact uh, with FSM are not ratified by uh, September 30th, uh, and there is no other extension of the funding, FSM will need to rely on their compact trust fund for financial assistance. This will be the same thing with RMI, and then with Palau, the economic assistance doesn't expire until 2024, so they will continue to receive economic assistance. 
I think the question was directed to you, Dr. Uh, Mr. Yoon, uh, because you have been the special envoy for compact negotiation. Tell me what's going on and what's the hiccup here. Look, uh, sir, I mean, to be completely frank with you, uh, we have offered them 2.3 billion over the next 20 years, and that memorandum was signed some months ago. And, uh, and so it does puzzle me as well why it has become not acceptable. Of course, the, the reason they state is that it's because the nuclear issues have not been resolved. The nuclear issues have not been resolved yet. I'd like to point out two aspects of nuclear issues. One is, as you rightly mentioned, sir, uh, our legal responsibility for nuclear uh, liability has been met, and they have agreed to that. that was, but settled in, was that not settled in the 1980s? It was settled in 1980s. But we've always still but we've tried always, the needs of the system. Exactly. We've always felt that there were additional needs. Uh, we, we still feel that way, right? We still feel that way, which is why within the $2.3 billion that uh, we offered them, $700 million was set aside trust. to to put into the trust fund. And that 700 million could be used for development, education, environment issues of nuclear uh, atolls, as well as other atolls. So in the, from the beginning, RMI government has insisted that they would like to have a bigger role in setting up their priorities. So which is why we put that aside for them to decide how they want to apportion them with obviously some oversight from the United States. Thank you so much. And I think when we get to our second panel, we'll get uh, a little bit more into this uh, uh, concerns. With that, I'll turn to my friend, Senator Brasso. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ambassador Young. And just if I could say 